What is going on everybody and in this video we'll be taking a look at the Cadillac Coupe de Ville Marcos Cab. Now this is a motor pass vehicle. It is basically level 1 so once you buy the pass you immediately unlock this. And honestly this car is pretty awesome. Uh, I'm not going to lie. I actually like this thing so far from testing out a little bit. And it is something different to use besides the Crown Victoria uh, Marcos Cab there as well. I will be doing a comparison video of both cabs versus each other to see which one's better. Top speed, handling, all that good stuff. I'll also be doing a comparison video versus the regular Coupe de Ville as well. Now this car pretty much will only be used for cab stuff. Honestly, like the new mission that they added. I mean, they don't see another reason to use this thing. 630 BHP there, 226 miles an hour. Pretty normal for most of the street cars. Let's go see if we can customize this thing right now, which my guess, obviously you cannot. So you cannot customize the cabs. I mean, what else could you really do to this thing? Um, I mean, it's already kind of customized. and looks pretty awesome as well. Vanity items are normal. So tires, smokes, nitros, underglows, window tins, horns. And you can also do some rooftop stuff with this car. The other uh, Crown Victoria, you cannot. So this car, you can actually add some stuff. You want to add the Back to the Future thing on there, which for some weird reason actually fits the car, which is kind of weird. But that's pretty much it for customization overall. Let's go drive this thing right now and let's see how it is top speed. Let's see how it sounds. Probably sounds pretty similar to the other one, I would think. Let's do a race and or one of the new taxi missions with it because that's pretty much what most people will probably be using this car for. So arriving outside, as you guys can see, I am in the middle of a big pileup. For some weird reason, none of these pedestrians can drive when you guys sit in one place for a while unless they run into each other. Kind of hilarious. I really don't know what's going on over there. Anyway, let's listen to this thing right now. Probably gonna sound like the regular car. Here's the interior. So it's gonna probably be all yellow. The other car will not have that. It has that thing as well for like cab services. And coolly enough, you can actually see the back seat in this car, which is nice. Uh, the whole back's tinted, but you can actually see the back seat, unlike the other Crown Victoria. So let's go uh, drive this thing a little bit. Excuse me, crazy pedestrian drivers. My guess is the acceleration on this car will probably be similar to the other one. And you guys see on the back uh, wheel there, this thing also turns. When I do that, there you go. It has a number of the cab, the name of the cab as well. Just like that, Marco's cab. Pretty cool. So it has a little detail to it. Take this thing for a nice little drive on this busy highway. Interior looks nice and detailed, just like the other DeVille as well. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. It's probably DeVille. Who really knows? See, this thing can do 250 just like the other car can. My guess is it probably can. Like, this car is basically something you want to use if you don't feel like using the Crown Victoria. It gives you, like, a different option in the ta in the cab world to actually use in this. So, slamming the nitrous down. going to burn through nitrous pretty bad. 251. Basically, has the same top speed as the other car as well. I have the same, pretty much the same build on it as well to see how this thing will turn when doing one of the cab missions. I'll probably do, like, a long one and see how it will actually perform in there continue down the road here honestly it i mean it, dri it drives pretty nice so far acceleration seems pretty decent let's test out the brakes yeah that that is definitely going to get you in an accident so if you're trying to slam the brakes down and go around turns with this that's going to be a bit of a challenge there i'll be testing the brakes with the crown victoria as well compared to this car in the taxi video see how they actually do against each other overall i have to say it is obviously pretty bad with braking there acceleration seems pretty average for the car overall Let's go do one of the cab missions right now and see how it does in there. I figured I'd actually do a couple of these because some of them are actually really short. So I'm going to start one up right now. Let's accept it. Where do you need me? Oh, this one's actually... So this one is five miles. It is not really that short. So I guess I'll just do this one then. So overall, the acceleration on the car seems pretty normal. I know many people probably only get this car to go against the Crown Victoria there. Um, probably no really other reason to use this thing besides that. Unless you guys feel like racing it or something like that. Got a time limit there, so this thing can actually beat it. So being able to shift down will probably help as well. I mentioned that in other videos with the four-speed transmissions. You guys, kind of hard to actually shift them. I have done it before, but it just doesn't work that great. And I do feel like that is a flaw with these cars. I'm gonna cut this right here. Let's get this thing on the road. Actually, see how it accelerate over here. That guy's gonna freak out a little bit, and he obviously can't see anybody back there. So you're pretty much carrying a ghost. I was wondering about that with this car, actually, so we can't see anyone back there, it looks like. Oh, that was very interesting driving there on my part. Oh, look at those brakes. My goodness, those are horrendous. Okay, well, braking is not the strong suit of this vehicle, if you were wondering. It took quite a while to even slow down a little bit there. The Crown Victoria might be better in ways, but that's why I'm going to compare them both and see. 
That car's also only seven bucks and one crew credit right now. This car is basically ten dollars. So this thing will actually do though. So overall, I mean, it's holding speed nicely, but most of the street cars can do that. I know some of these cars that have added, like the truck, for example, 3100. That thing uh, has issues holding speed. Uh, the regular version of this car also had some issues as well. So compared to other really good street cars, might have some problems. So every time you hit the nitrous, that dude makes a different sound in the vehicle. Oh, that was terrible. And that, my friends, is why you never want to drive off-road with one of these. I lost complete grip in the front there and lost control of the vehicle. So make sure you guys keep the car on the road. That would be a good idea. So just doing this one right here as I almost fly off that bridge too. This road is interesting. Good test on the vehicle though. So overall, the handling doesn't seem bad. I might have to lower the ARBs and all that a little bit, which I'll show at the end of the video. So it doesn't turn as tightly there. But overall, I beat that messing up multiple times with basically a minute to spare or so. So I think he did a pretty decent job. Let's drop this dude off here. I don't know why he's uh, coming over here, but hey, there's a vehicle tip there. So the car did pretty good. I'm actually going to do one more, another short one for that matter, just to see how this car will do again. For this one, I figured I'd come over here in New York City and do this one. So let's hit this right now. Accept it. So it seems like a lot of these do go the same direction. Like when you start them, it's not like they're random in that said area. It looks like they all have the same route or so. One time I did one over here that was only a minute or so. It was like a minute and 40 seconds to complete. This one looks like it's a little bit longer. We've actually done this one before. Good test on the car's handling and all that with its braking, which is kind of non-existent in ways. All right, I hit the handbrake there a little bit on that turn to make sure it turns. I have the car in automatic as well, if anyone was wondering. Overall, it's actually doing pretty decent. It's very comparable to the Crown Victoria, obviously, because they are pretty much... The cab vehicles really are only used for this. Like, you're not really going to be able to be racing them. Unless in one of the summits, like the one coming up with that really cool-looking car. Maybe that one might require you to drive a taxi. Who knows? That wouldn't really surprise me too much. So the thing catches speed decently. Uh, nitrous, obviously, will help it get up to speed a little bit faster. So if you guys have Nitro Chemist... Throw it on this thing will definitely help a lot if you guys are farming these uh, taxi missions. Probably a good idea to have some good nitrous on your vehicle and all that and make sure you have a uh, good build on your vehicle because these definitely take you all over the place. I have to admit, so far the taxi missions are pretty fun. Uh, if you're looking to just mess around and drive around a bit, you could do one of these in the meantime. You also don't have to drive a taxi. I should I mention that in one of the uh, guide videos? Nonetheless, these are pretty cool to have though. I was kind of waiting for them to add a taxi, seeing so many of them parked everywhere, especially in New York City on here. So it makes sense for them to actually add one. This game kind of fits limos too, but regardless, kind of interesting. So overall, how is this car? So honestly, the handling is pretty decent. The brakes are terrible. That we can all agree on. Look at that. Couldn't even stop. The brakes are terrible. Speed is pretty average overall. 250 is basically the same as the regular one here. Um, regardless, they're really not too different in any way. I'd say they're pretty similar, but I'm still going to do a test on them to see because some one might be better than the other. Handling or speed. Sometimes the cars are kind of weird. They're the exact same car, but they handle completely different than each other. Thank you all so much for watching. And, well, if you're going to grab the Motor Pass, you'll get this car immediately with it. Would I get the Motor Pass just for this car? Uh, no, I would say not do that. If you're going to get it, get it for the Julia at least. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. That off Romero is very, very nice. At least do it for that vehicle. But this one, I mean, it's it's cool. But it's definitely not worth just getting a motor pass just for this. Especially when you have the Crown Victoria. That car pretty much can do everything this can. Pretty similarly. And here are the settings I'm running on my Coupe DeVille Marcos cab. Now, like I said, I probably butchered that name. But I did adjust the tuning on this car a little bit. Because it wasn't turning that well when I was driving it. And I know it could be a little bit better. So here are the settings I'm running on it now. And I recommend trying this out. Overall, this car is pretty cool, and when it comes to this first, the lovely Crown Victoria cab, we'll have to do a test on both of these together to see which one's actually better. Regardless, most people probably just use the other cab for these, because you're going to get the motor pass. Most people probably won't be getting it just for this car. Thank you all so much again for watching.